Welcome to Washington Times Higher Ground. I am excited to be chatting with both of you. We are going to be talking about the film The Blind, which tells your story. Uh, but I want to start, I'm going to start with you, Miss Kay, and then I want to get your response, uh, Phil. When it comes to fame, what have been some of the biggest unexpected blessings? Well, for me, I mean, I have met a lot of great people. I really have and, and had new relationships. And I, I just feel like we hope that we're showing that you can be famous. And, of course, we've made good money, too, and all that, but still be your regular self. I mean, most people that meet us do not feel like we're rich and famous. <laughs> they just feel like we're regular people who have a great show, a great, you know, people they like to look at and see. And that's what I want. I don't want them to say we're rich and famous and all that. So that's what we're trying to achieve. And I think we've done it pretty good. How about you, Phil? What spurs me on is a little text in Hebrews. By one sacrifice, this Jesus by one sacrifice, now listen to this, has made his death on the cross, has made perfect forever those who come to him. I mean, if you just think about it, you say his blood gives us the opportunity to look beyond our sinful self. So we just fill in the gaps all these things that are, you can see, immorality, that's, I'm guilty of charge, drunkenness, all these sins, you can read those. But then you say, what do you get when he shows up, when you come to him by faith? Love, mm. joy, peace, patience. You say, you, that's what you receive. And it's well worth the effort to follow Jesus faithfully. I mean, well, you, and you're promised great things. Yeah, it's a transformed life, which is what the blind shows. Your life being transformed, your family transformed. And I think you know, it's so interesting looking at this because I believe that you know, with a project like this, God always times them perfectly for what people need. And I look at the culture today, and, and Phil, I'll ask you this mm -hmm. first, and Miss Kay weigh in as well, but the culture is so chaotic right now. When you look at the culture yep. where we are and what the blind has to offer and your story has to offer, um, wh why do you think this is the right time for this movie? I think it's the right time because at any time in history, it's the right time. I mean, just think about it. When Jesus, he predicted, I'm going up to Jerusalem, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, the, the religious people, they're going to kill me. Three days, I'm going to be raised from the dead. And all of his disciples were looking around saying, do what? He's going to do what? They were just stunned. Well, then when he does it, and in post-resurrection, he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. I just beat death. Therefore, go and make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and I'll be with you to the end of the age. Well, when you read texts like that, you say, well, I see what my job is. So some people are designated to be outward speakers for God. So that's the way it turned out with me. I just went all in, and I'm still all in. I'm just asking everybody who watches this movie or doesn't watch it, do you have a better story? Jesus died, removed your sin, raised from the dead. Is your story better than that one? And I, I, trust me, I've never heard anyone with a better story. Yeah, well, no, I, I agree with you. So I'm not budging. I love it. You should, and you shouldn't budge. You shouldn't. And, you know, Miss Kay, for you, because this was one of the most painful, what the film documents, one of the most painful moments um, that you went through, many of them in your life being documented in this movie, shown in this movie. You know, 
what was the process like for you to open up in a different way? Because you've shared your story before, but to do it on the big screen in front of millions of people, what was that like for you? Yeah, it is hard. Uh, and the thing about it is, I thought that uh, my uh, son and my nephew and all who did the movie did such a great job because they did get to the bad, which you had to show that to get to the good. But like, uh, you know, Phil, and he's open about the fact, you know, of all the bad things, because without Jesus, well, yeah, he's going to be getting drunk. He's going to be going out with other women. He's got all those lying and things like that. I think the only thing he, he didn't steal, though, never stole anything in his life. But he, he did enough other things. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, you know, and I'd say, am I going to run into some women that he had been with her? That was real hard to think on that. But then I had to say, you know, when Jesus forgives us, he wipes it all away. So I knew when I forgave Phil, I had to wipe it away. And then to try to not just forgive, but to forgive and forget. And, you know, that was hard. And I asked Phil, could he do, if we, or if I, roles were reversed, he said, I would have a hard time with that. I don't know that he could forgive me like I forgave him. Mm. He's honest. Trust me, I can now. I can now. Well, with Jesus, you could do anything, you know, but it's, you guys, you know, when I think about being so open and vulnerable, a lot of people, when they reach fame, you know, Phil, they try to not talk about the bad parts of their lives. They don't want to acknowledge them. They want to pretend that they're perfect. And a lot of people would look at your family when watching the show. That's the perfect family. But you guys were always open and honest about where you came from, how you got where you were. What led you to be so open, Phil, and honest, even well before the blind, with your story? Because I wanted people to realize the the situation I was in, living a sinful life, you got to remember, all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I'm not the only person who has sinned. The whole bunch has sinned. Everybody, all have sinned. Everybody. So the way out is faith in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, resurrection, and Go forth with Jesus on your lips. Reach out to people and forgive them no matter what they've done. And so it's just, uh, I would have never dreamed I would be out there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ when I was back there to get drunk as a skunk. And you know, and you say, but when that happened and I was freed from it, that's why I've been saying ever since that happened, and I came to Jesus. I've just take, stay, stayed on the right path, made mistakes, but nothing like was in the in what I was forgiven of. So it's just the decision that a human being makes, and we all can make it, but uh, it's a tough one. I think maybe if these people watch the movie and see how I was, and then they look at me now and see how I operate, they're like, that old guy, I mean, he went from, from, and I looked around one day on top of it all, I was a millionaire. I thought, what in the world? I said, I never dreamed God would bless me like that in this case. Yeah, so, you know, there's, there's two parallel stories in the blind that I feel like are, are so fascinating in your story. There's your conversion, right? Which I think that, is, that shows us how God changes people. And then Miss K, in your story, there's the trust and forgiveness, right? There's these two parallel things because you had a very different journey you had to go on. You had to overcome so much and, and trust in God, trust in your husband again and forgive. What did you learn most on that journey, Miss Kay? Because I know you probably can't even do it justice in this interview because it's so complicated, but I, I'd love to sort of hear that from your perspective. Well, uh, I'll tell you one thing. I, I knew... I knew that we were meant to be together. And I also knew I did not want to be a, a divorced wife. I wanted our marriage to work no matter what. And I knew that God could change him. 
And so I went and I just put my faith in that possibility that that was going to happen. And when our, chil- when our children, we were separated one time, and they just kept saying, Mom, are we going to live without Daddy? And I said, no, we're going to have Daddy again. But when we have him, he's going to be a different Daddy. He's not going to be mean, and he's not going to go out and stay all night and come in and not act right. I mean, I just, we were real honest with them. We wanted them to know, you know, everything. We didn't hide it or anything. We really let it go. And, you know, they uh, really, the kids wanted it and prayed for it. We did together. And, uh, you know, I just, I knew God could do it. I knew he could. And so when we were separated a long time and he did come back, you know, that was the time when I looked at him when he drove back and I went out to meet him. I didn't know what he was going to be drunk or what, it, but I was at my work and I was, the, my girlfriend said, he might kill you. And I said, no, he's not going to kill me. I'm not a deer or a duck. He's not going to kill me. He's going to, he could be mean, but he's not going to do that. But when I went out there and saw his face and I knew that he was going through repentance because tears were coming out and, you know, he said, I can't eat. I can't do anything. I I want my family back. And I said, well, there's one way to do it, and it's not going to be that I'm going to let you come home. I said, you have to be a changed person, and I need you to talk to someone. And so, you know, he knew then what I was talking about, and he said, you want me to talk to that preacher that came to the beer joint that time? (laughs) and saw me, and I said, that's exactly who I want you to talk to. And he said, well, I only want to talk to him. And so that's what happened that night. We met him, and he came to our apartment. And my boys and I were in the back bedroom, and the whole time they were studying in the living room, we were praying for him. And then the the preacher left, and the boys were like, nothing happened And I said, no, no, just give it time. I said, this is a lot to put on somebody that's been living for the devil for 10 years. He has to think it. He has to, you know, he didn't trust people. So that's what he told the preacher. He said, I've got to check out all these verses you gave me because I don't trust you. And the preacher said, well, if I'd been running with the people you ran with, Phil, I wouldn't trust anybody either. So the next night he came back, you know, that was, of course, the night he uh, came to Jesus, and they actually went to the church building, and uh, we walked in. We were late because we had ran to the store. We saw the note on the door, hurry, come to the church building. So we ran up there, and we were in the back of the church, and the baptistry was all lit up. And as we walked in and stood in the back of the church, that was Phil giving his confession that Jesus is going to be the Lord of his life. He wanted to repent, you know, of all his life. And he was baptized right then and there. And I looked down at my boys and just big tears were rolling down their eyes. And Jason said, is he going to cuss anymore? And I said, he's going to learn not to cuss anymore. (laughs) Think about it. Now I'm standing there. We sit down at a table two times a week for about two or three hours at a time, and I'm sitting there looking at my oldest son and the one just below him, Al and Jace. I'm speaking of biblical things. We're, We're preaching the gospel. Me, my two sons, and the other two are actively preaching the gospel too. But my own sons, I'm looking at them once they became adults. Well, they stayed on the course, and they didn't go through all of what I went through. Everybody makes mistakes. But my children now, we were meeting on a podcast, and the thing went to number one in the religious world. So I'd have never dreamed that would happen. But now I'm working with my own children who went through all of that when they were younger, and you say, what a relief and what a great feeling to, is to talk about God and what he's done for us, the sins yeah. of the world, what he's, what he's done. And, I mean, it's amazing. It's incredible. My children are with me. 
I, and I've always loved that about about your family. You know, you had you had the show, you had other shows before that, but you had the show. Then you have the podcast, and you know, you've been able to continue this story. Now you have the blind. You're able to to really show this in a different way and to bring people the truth of the gospel. I appreciate you both taking the time. The film is The Blind. It comes out September 28th. Thanks so much.